Welcome back to Doctrine Forensics. This is one of these videos where I need to be really clear and really honest. People like Bill Johnson, who is a so-called apostle in the new apostolic reformation, he needs to step down. There was a toddler death at Bethel Redding a few days ago and it reveals the sickness of the charismatic movement that, like you wouldn't believe. Now I'm going to glean from an article written by Jeff Maples and an actual author of another article out of California, Jared Gilmore, both confirming this sordid story about the Bethel cult clan attempting to raise a two-year-old after five days now going on six days. We're going to talk about this and what the Bible actually says about the resurrection in just a second. Bill Johnson from Bethel Church here, Redding, California. First of all, I wanted to say thank you to the countless numbers of people around the world that have been praying with us for the miracle that we need this week. Saturday, just a few days ago, we had a great tragedy. One of the key individuals in our world, uh, their two-year-old little girl died quite unexpectedly, just out of nowhere. And so we've been uh, praying for the miracle of God. Mom and Dad, Andrew and Callie, have asked us to pray for resurrection. We've joined with them. We have a biblical precedent. Jesus raised the dead. Jesus raised the dead. Not only that, he introduced himself as the resurrection and the life. In fact, in John 11, verse 40, he says, If you believe, you will see the glory of God. And so seeing what Jesus has accomplished, what he did in his lifetime, and then when you add to that, that he commanded his followers, his disciples, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out devils, to cleanse lepers. None of those are things that we can actually do. And yet he commanded us because somehow in our yes, he gives us the ability to carry out his mission. Being commissioned means we've said yes to his mission. Anyway, this is our heart. So we've tried to run with a, a real conviction and a devotion to the very thing that Jesus taught us to do. So he modeled it and he commanded us to do the same. Some have asked, isn't this interrupting the sovereignty of God? And my response is, you know, I mean, first of all, we don't ever want to violate the sovereignty of God. God is sovereign. He chooses what he wants and we cooperate with him. There's no question. But then my question is, why did Jesus raise the dead? Did he violate the sovereignty of God? Did we have the Father will one thing and Jesus will another? Of course not. We know that's not true. The reason Jesus raised the dead is because not everyone dies in God's timing. And Jesus could tell. And he would interrupt that funeral. He would interrupt that process that some would just call the sovereignty of God. And he'd raise the little girl. He'd raise the adult person from the dead. The point is, Jesus set a precedent for us to follow. We rarely know what we're doing, especially when we come into new areas like this. There's no manual that tells us fast this many days, pray this many hours. We don't have any of that. What we do have is a biblical precedent, Jesus's lifestyle and Jesus's commands. Some would ask, how long do you pray and when do you quit praying? And I don't have a good answer. We're kind of in the middle of that journey right now. But there is a biblical precedent to continue praying. Luke chapter 18, verse 1, is a whole story about the importance of persistent persistence in prayer. Um, what is it? The end of Hebrews 11, uh, 10 and the beginning of Hebrews 11 talks about enduring faith. 
the faith that endures past what everybody would expect. It's that need to hold something. So we're in that point. We, we admittedly are just trying our best. We want to honor mom and dad. We want to honor their heart for the resurrection of their child. And so we've said yes. We've partnered with them. The child has been in, in the morgue ever since uh, the child died. He's not, she's not here. We don't surround the baby and perform some ritual. We're just, we're together, honestly, to worship Jesus. He's the miracle worker. We're not. He is the grace giver. We're not. He is the one from whom all perfect gifts flow. And we simply are here to honor the name of Jesus. We know enough about this process through the years. We know enough that when there's a breakthrough, when there's an answer, when there's a miracle of any kind, he gets the glory. He gets the credit. He's the one who performed it. And it may have been our hands, may have been our words, but honestly, he's the miracle worker. We're just tools in his hands. But when it doesn't work, we don't blame God. We give him the glory. We give him the praise. We celebrate his goodness, his kindness. Because nothing about our experience, difficult or not, changes who he is. We are spending our life trying to discover this wonderful, wonderful father who is so perfect in every way. And our passion, our heart, is to discover that and to make it known. We've got a planet of people that are hurting so deeply because they just don't know what this Heavenly Father is like. And so we've given our life to this. We're going to get some things good, right, some things we won't do so well. But we're in a journey like you, like many of you, and we're in this pursuit to see Jesus exalted and a whole generation of people that can accurately and responsibly demonstrate the love, the purity, and the power of God. This is our passion. Thank you again. So many of you have helped us. You've prayed with us. You've joined with us. Some of you did so a couple years ago when we had little Jackson Taylor in the crisis and the miracle that God performed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Others of you have sent challenging questions to us. And, and I thank you as well because we never want to take anything for granted. We just have this heart to walk in purity, to walk in love, to walk responsibly. And we've said yes to that call and you've helped us. So I want to thank you. I want to bless all of you in Jesus' name. Thank you for being a part of our global family. Jeff Maples, in a blog post on ReformationCharlotte.org, cites, Toddler death at Bethel Redding reveals sickness of the charismatic movement. Bethel Church in Redding, California, is pastored by Bill Johnson, who claims to be an apostle. He claims apostolic authority, just like the 12 men during Jesus' time here on the earth. Bethel Redding, like all cults, is filled with aberrant, unbiblical teaching, doctrines of demons, including false manifestations of the Holy Spirit, grave sucking, and of course, the prosperity gospel. Now, recently, one of Bethel's songwriters and worship leaders, Kaylee Heiligenthal, asked for prayer after her two-year-old daughter stopped breathing. Her daughter, Olive Elena passed away on Saturday, December 14th. The next day, she was asking for prayers to resurrect her daughter. The saddest part is that during this mother's grief and sadness, she wasn't asking for prayers to deal with her grief and emotional distress. Now, I can only imagine being how horrific she may have felt, but that she had been deceived by her cult that is what she should be seeking. Now, sadly, and obviously that did not happen. Now, I don't want to downplay, and Jeff doesn't want to downplay the loss of a mother or even make light of it, but wholeheartedly let's hold her church accountable for this. Instead of teaching her how to think rightly and biblically about this tragic loss, her pastor and church were encouraging her in idolatrous thoughts.
Now, Chris Valentine, second in command at Bethel and a, another quote unquote NAR apostle, confirmed Kaylee's idolatrous acts by republishing her request for a resurrection. Now, Chris Valentine posted on December 15th at 1.54 p.m. this. Please join us as we pray in bold faith for a miracle for our very own Kaylee and Andrew. We're asking for prayer. We believe in a Jesus who died and conclusively defeated every grave, holding the keys to resurrection power. We need it for our little Olive, who stopped breathing yesterday and has been pronounced dead by doctors. We're asking for bold, unified prayers from the global church to stand with us and believe that he will raise this little girl back to life. Her time is here is not done, and it is our time to believe boldly and with confidence what King Jesus paid for. It is time for her to come to life. Proclaiming a full day after the child's death that this girl's time here on the earth is quote unquote not done is complete blasphemy against God. What he should have been doing is praying for this poor mother to seek God's glory in the death of this child. Open her eyes to the truth, repent and believe in Jesus Christ for salvation. But that's not what's going on here with the gospel of the charismatic movement. The charismatic movement focused primarily on the temporal and the material things of this world. Now, the charismatic movement, and in particular Bethel Redding, is an affront to the gospel of Jesus Christ and the gospel of grace. This false gospel comes from this church and has the potential to turn many people away from Christ as they now look at this and view this as a failure of Christianity. But the reality is this, we are not promised life on this earth, but we are promised eternal life. What's even more glaring and disturbing is that a GoFundMe account has been set up to assist the parents of Little Olives in their difficult time. Now, Jared Gilmore of the Sacramento Bee, sacbee.com, further writes that police in Northern California have confirmed the weakened death of a two-year-old girl as the child's family and community church continued praying for her resurrection. Quote, we responded originally to all medical calls on Saturday morning around 6 a.m., Sergeant Brian Torum said of the Reading Police Department and in the phone interview with McClatch News on Thursday, quote, it resulted in a death. Now, the girl Olive stopped breathing at her family's Reading home and could not be revived that morning. Her family said in a post on social media, but then the parents, Andrew and Kaylee, have been praying for Olive to come back to life, along with fellow congregants of Bethel Church in Northern California town and other followers of the Reading-based megachurch around the world. The Shasta County's coroner's office did not respond to a request for the confirmation of the child's death on Wednesday, but Trump said that the child's body was taken to the coroner, explaining that bodies are sent there in all cases of death where an autopsy will be performed. Now, Trump said police are looking into the child's death, which I think is a very good thing. If it's unexpected, we'll open up a case to figure out how the death occurred term said, but it's by no means at this point a suspicious death, but we still have to investigate to see what happened. I think that's a good practice. It could take months for the official cause of death to be released, term said. The autopsy has been done. There's no official result, term said. It's still pretty early. We're still talking to witnesses and going through information. It takes time. Now, the girl's mother, Kaylee, a singer and songwriter at Bethel Music, which is affiliated with the church, wrote in an Instagram post on Wednesday that, quote, day five is a really good day for resurrection. I've never been more grateful for Jesus, she wrote. He is endlessly worthy of our love, trust, faith, and risk. That's not in the Bible. Now, Pastor Bill Johnson of Bethel Church shared a video about Olive with the church on his Facebook page and got a half million followers on Wednesday. Mom and dad, Andrew and Kaylee, have been praying for a miracle of resurrection. We've joined them, Johnson said. 
we have a biblical precedent. Jesus raised the dead. Jesus raised the dead. Not only that, he introduced himself as the resurrection and the life. In fact, in John eleven forty, he says, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. This video has been viewed more than 200,000 times in less than one day. Johnson went on to tell his followers that the child has been in the morgue ever since the child died. She's not here. We don't surround the baby and perform some ritual. We're just together here honestly to worship Jesus. He is the grace giver and we are not. Well, Bill, you're a liar. What we see is your congregants are worshiping, they're congregating, and they are going through some type of ritual in prayer and worship, calling that this little two-year-old girl be raised from the dead. Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Let us go into Judea again. Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may wake him out of sleep. Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. brother had no time. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Thy brother shall rise again. I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Yeah, no. I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which you come the world. Go and bring thy sister. My brother. 
father had not died. Where have you laid him? Lord, come and see. Behold, how he loved him. Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? Take you away the stone. Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, I should see the glory of God. Thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Lazarus. Come forth. Now, it's quite clear from this passage what God and the Lord Jesus was trying to accomplish, He's trying to get the attention of the Jewish people of that day. And so what we have here is an extraordinary measure taken by God the Father through Jesus by way of the Holy Spirit for the point of ministry. It's very clear that Jesus was tying back this particular miracle to the faith of Martha and Mary, not the faith that he could heal, but the faith that he is who he says he is, which is the son of God. Now, consequently, our friends over at Bethel Redding are not taking the same position on the death of little Olive. Little Olive is not coming back to us, but let's say hypothetically that she did. If she did come back, guess who would get the glory? It certainly would not be God. My final thoughts and personal thoughts goes back to the very beginning of this video. Bill Johnson is a heretical, blasphemous person. 
what he teaches does not line up with the word of God. And he has gone the way of Balaam and he has gone the way of the wicked one. Anyone that's following behind Bill Johnson, Chris Balaton and the quote unquote NAR, New Apostolic Reformation, which is an organization that apparently no one's supposed to know about. It doesn't exist, but yet it exists. You are following a path of destruction. You are putting yourself in grave danger and you're putting others who perhaps believe in you, perhaps they have confidence in you and are trusting that you will help them make good biblical sound decisions about the trees that you eat from. You should be concerned when we see these types of articles being parroted, not only in the Christian community, but also you see the same article being parroted in the secular world. It all boils down to this. This is heresy, this is heretical, this is blasphemous, and this is not of God. I wanna thank you for listening to Doctrine Forensics. If you like this material, please click, like, subscribe, comment, and share. God bless you and your family.